symptomatic, but let me eat this honey bun, this donut, and drink this poison Tahitian treat. Hawaiian punch. You don't want it, no matter how much ice you put in it, it will not get cold. That's because there's so much dye. It's so much dye and sugar in Hawaiian punch, you can't make it cold. The bottle can be cold on the outside, but it's going to be still warm. Something wrong with that. That's a lot of chemicals. A lot of chemicals. And you're going to put those chemicals in you. And that's why when something like this happens with this strong delusion, folks' faith and confidence is in the shot because they ain't never done nothing to take care of themselves. They've never done anything to take care of themselves. Never ate right, never slept right, never forgave, and got that stuff off their heart, got that stuff off of their, out of their gut, that hatred, that malice, that Jezebel spirit. Now it's the truth, it's the truth. That's why they running after it and don't have any faith at all to assemble. You know why we got faith to assemble? We ain't afraid because we dealing with ourselves in here. And I believe God holds my future. Oh, well, Pastor C, but that you putting the other people in danger. That's irresponsible. Well, Moses was irresponsible when they split the Red Sea and led the people through that. What was going through his head? Man, am I going to get these folks killed? No, they all have to have faith to walk through that. Either we're going to have faith or we're not going to have faith. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to have faith. I mean, anybody scared can stay home. We ain't forcing nobody to come here. We come in here by faith. Because the just shall live by faith. Without faith, it's what? Impossible to please God. Because when you come to him, you must first believe. That he is who he says he is, and he's a rewarder. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to have faith. Wait until the end times to punk out. Wait until the devil put, drop his trump card. Now we, we hiding our deck from him. Nah, man, I've been playing this game a long time. I'm ready for you. You throw something down, I'm throwing something down. And we're going to keep playing until one of us wins. And the Bible said that I'm going to be the one that wins. What? You love your life that much? You love your life more than you love Christ? I got so mad this week, my mama had to just <laughs> stop telling me stuff. I was talking, I just, I told her on the phone, I said, oh, I wish you could see the way I'm looking right now. Just so disgusted at all these tongue-talking, bucking and shouting folks hiding somewhere, scared. Won't even shake your hand, fist bumping and elbow bumping. Hey, brother, now, I tell you, know, something's out there. Yeah, something's out there, it's in you too. What you scared of, man? You supposed to be a man of God. Did God call you? You gonna let the world take your call? Stop you from feeding God's sheep? Your life that valuable to you? What you living for anyway? You live, you, you're living for things, you're living for show, you're living for people's applause. Well, guess what? All that's about to go away. Then what you going to be living for? What you going to be living for when they lock everybody down, put everybody, including the vaccinated? Amen. See, let me, let me go on in. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, they blocked my podcast on Facebook. What, what, what you blocking it for? Why are there fact checkers? There, 
was no fact checkers until the truth started getting out. You used to get online and say anything. Oh, I'm a balloon. I can just float my head. I'm crazy. The government is crazy. Everybody's lying. A year ago, you could put all that on the internet with nobody mess with you. Now, if you say anything against their agenda, they're going to fact check it and delete it, block it. You don't see nothing wrong. You don't see what's going on. You can't tell the truth. The Bible said he would send strong delusion to those. To who? Those that don't have the love for what? The truth. If you're blocking the truth, you hate the truth. If you're blocking the truth, you don't want people to know the truth. Why? Because the Bible said the truth will make you free. I'm rolling with the truth. Anybody rolling with the truth in here? All right, let me get through these slides right quick. Man, y'all done got me. I can't put none of this on the internet. Hey, Amen. I don't care. <laughs> oh, man, ain't you scared? They're going to come get you and come. Oh, they're a little late for that, brother. They're a little late for that, elder. You should have came and got me 31 DVDs ago. You should have came and got me 18 million views on the website ago. I think you're a little late now. All right. I don't mean to believe This is important. I got to say it. Come on. Love him with your life too. It's not long. Hopefully. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you know. Amen. I got to preach the gospel, y'all. I, I, I don't know nothing else. You know, people ask me all the time, man, you know, why you not talking about this stuff on the internet? You used to put videos up every week. Or whatever. I'm tired. Go watch what I said. I said it already. Did I say it already? Man, I spent a whole year during the pandemic recording videos. Three a week. Did one outside, one inside, and one online. They all still on there. Go watch them. I ain't the roving reporter to tell you what's going on in the world. <laughs> That's not my job. I'm here to preach the gospel. And either you're going to believe the truth or you're going to deny the truth. And if you deny the truth, you're going to believe the strong delusion. You're going to be somewhere scared of something that don't exist. Well, I, know, I know how y'all, you know, some folk don't understand, but we're so far ahead of what's going on right here now. We can come in here and talk about this stuff freely because God had already shown ABC what was going to happen. We've been prepared. We was praying and fasting three days a week. We didn't even know why. We just knew God said do it because something was happening. Had no idea a pandemic was coming. Look at somebody and say, we good in here. Good. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him do what? Deny himself. Uh, deny himself. Take up his cross and do what? Oh. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm following Jesus wherever he goes. And when he shows up, I'm following him then. When he shows up, wherever he goes next, G. Craig Lewis is going to be with him. Today, the hardest thing for most Christians to overcome is idolatry of self. This is the desire to do things their own way or the way it's been done before. Proverbs 16 and 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of Death. This is the problem. People are doing it the way they've seen it done before or doing it the way they desire to do it. So they can't overcome idolatry of self. But these things that are occurring in our world have to happen because this is the sifting of God's people. There always is a sifting. Jesus told Simon, 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 the devil has just requested while you up here talking and bragging has requested to sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith would not fail. And when you're restored, strengthen your brethren. Jesus knew what was going to happen. Peter looking like, what? Yeah, bro, you've got to be sifted. Why? Because Jesus really wants you. He really wants you. And he wants you to go back with him. Everyone under the sound of my voice in this place and beyond. Jesus wants you to go back with him. 
So he's going to allow the new world order to sift you. Yeah. Pull it off. If, that, if, if you want to go back with it. He's going to let the times we're living in right now sift you. And let's see if you can stand. If you deserve to be with him. That's what the sifting was for the disciples. To see if they deserve to be with him. Can I keep preaching? There are so many that are following after the pattern of society instead of having faith in God for what he promised. Having the faith to let go of your preconceived ideas is required in order to follow after him. So you don't come to Christ with your way. You don't come to Christ with tradition. Well, this is the way the Baptists do it. He don't care about that either. You got to be willing to let go of who you are for him. 1 John 2 and 15, let n love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So what is God doing? He's allowing the things to happen to see just how much you love the world. Can you part ways with the world? Can you let go of the world? Or are you going to be talked into doing something you're going to regret? I'm not doing nothing irreversible for the world. Irrever you mean it can't be reversed ever? If I change my mind, I can't get out of me what they put in me if, no matter what? You mean it's merged with my DNA and turn me into something different than what I was created by God to be? And I can't reverse that? Why would I make that decision on a whim? Having the faith to let go of your preconceived ideas is required in order to follow after him. It's required. It's not an option. 1 John 2 and 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is what? Not in it. Following after God means that you have faith without fear. There is no need to fear anything when you are following the plan of the one who ordained your life. That's if you believe he did. If God has spoken it, you have no fear of anything that tries to rise up against it. If God has spoken it. Did God speak for you to gather and teach? See, when I gather at church, when we come here, I believe, Walter, that when I get up here and get this microphone, God is speaking a word through me that was ordained for this congregation at this time. That's what I believe. Any of y'all believe that? You was riding around thinking something and came in here and I talked about it. Amen. You and your wife, you and your friend, somebody, you was having a conversation. You came in here, supernaturally it was brought up. That's because I believe when I... Stand up in here and preach. It's ordained by God. So how can I cancel what's ordained by God? No, I can't come. I can't do it because his stuff going around. Well, was it ordained of God? Because if it was ordained of God, what you canceling? Are you canceling God's plan or yours? Isaiah 54 and 1. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. No weapon. No bio weapon. No chemical weapon. Formed against you is going to what? Prosper. And every tongue that rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the saints of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen. Look at somebody and say, the word will preach. All right, let me get through this. Matthew 16 and 25. For whosoever will save his life shall what? Lose it. Lose it. 
Whosoever will run around here trying to save his life. Preaching with a mask and a shield on. Looking like Kylo Ren preaching. Bro, what you, I can't understand what you're saying. Bro. I watch Star Wars at home. Because I believe when I'm speaking, it's God speaking through me. So what do I have to fear if God is speaking? See, I always understood that maybe I got it wrong. Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe it's not God. Maybe it's just a man talking God stuff. I always believe that it's God speaking through his chosen vessel. So if it's his chosen vessel, God times his life and his death. All of that lies in the hands of the one that speaks through him and the one that called him. So if I'm called by him and he speaks through me, I'm on his time. And he decides when it ends and when it begins. Not the news, not CNN, not the CDC. They don't decide when the gospel's going to get preached and what God's men are supposed to be saying. But if you try to save your life, the Bible says you're going to lose it. But whosoever will lose his life, be a fool for Christ. Lay my whole life on, on the line. If I get sick, I get sick. If I get dead, I get dead. But I'm going to lay my whole life. We're supposed to be dead already. What on this earth is more, more important than the gospel of Jesus Christ? Ain't nothing more important than folks being saved. I don't want to walk around sick and dead or dying in my own mind, in my own heart. I can't get healed. I can't feel good about living because I'm so bogged down with sin and all the cares of this life. I need Jesus if I'm going to live because he is the way, the truth, and the life. So whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Many Christians today are busy trying to make a name for themselves. Get online views and likes. You know they're going to shut the internet down. You didn't know that? That's what communism does. Totalitarianism. They can't have all these folks talking against what they're trying to do. They always start with the Fact checkers, then they start blocking, then they delete the whole thing. Like in Korea, you can't even go online. Yeah. So while you're trying to get views and likes and be seen, it's all going to go away. Because folk like me on there talking against it, they tired of us. But many today, that's what they care about. They're busy trying to make a name for themselves. Get online views and likes and be lifted up as a great one in the eyes of men. Seeking after these things is a sin. Luke 14 and 11, for whosoever exalts himself shall be what? Forgotten. But he that humbleth himself shall be what? Exalted. These are the same people that are afraid of the virus. And do not have the faith to stand against the strong delusion of our times. In their heart of hearts. They believe the pandemic is an equalizer sent to expose their bad fruit and selfish motives. That's why they're scared of it. You know, if you know you've been doing a fool and you've been a jive turkey, you're going to be scared of the, of the virus. And that, it's the equalizer. It looked like Denzel. <laughs> to you. Sent to expose the bad fruit and selfish motives. 
So they preach and teach the word in fear instead of faith. So if you're scared, what are you preaching? Well, y'all, you know, we, you know, God is good. Is he? I mean, you know, God is, he's faithful. Is he? Then why we ain't in the building if he's faithful? Well, we got to use wisdom. Wisdom from above? Your wisdom is sensual. Bro, you worried about what people think. That's earthly wisdom. Wisdom from above says, forget not the fe- forsake not the fellowship one to another. Especially when all of this stuff is going on. That's God's wisdom. Y'all need to be together. In the heart of hearts, they believe the pandemic is an equalizer. So they preach and teach the word in fear instead of faith. They force their followers and members to be vaxxed so they can feel less fearful of it. Their own selfish ambitions have begun to judge them. Your own selfish ambitions. 1 John 4 and 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love does what? Man, if you love your brother, you'll shake his hand. If you love your brother or your sister, you'll give him a hug. You ain't gonna shoulder bump him looking like a stormtrooper. Mast out of you. No, if you love him, perfect love cast out what? When the, the lepers came to Jesus, Jesus didn't take off running. Whoa, whoa. I hear you from back here. Raise your hands, lift your hands. Their own selfish ambitions ambitions have begun to judge them. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because what does fear have? Torment. Torment. I can't live every day wondering whether I'm going to live or die because somebody sneezed. That's torment. That's torment. Walking in a restaurant, all masked up, everything, then sit down and take it all off and eat. Because COVID has a height limit. It's a height limit. Oh, if I'm down here eating, I'm fine. But once you stand up, look at somebody say, strong delusion. But the doctors are saying, the doctors are saying, you don't know what the Hippocratic Oath is, do you? You need to go get my video pharmacos. These are the same doctors that make deals with the pharmaceutical companies and give you stuff you don't need. Check your blood pressure and give you blood pressure medication and tell you you're going to be on it for the rest of your life. And if you say, well, what if I exercise? What if I get healthy? What if I go? Ah, you're just going to be on it for the rest of your life. Why are you going to be on it for the rest of your life? He don't know what the rest of your life is going to be like. Why you got to be on it the rest of your life? Oh, oh, I get it. Because you keep getting paid as long as I take it. Yeah, that's who you trust in. That's who you trust. Folk trust them more than they trust the man of God. Fear hath torment. That's why folks so scared of this thing because they own all the drugs too. The Christians, their faith and confidence is in all the drugs. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Many are so busy trying to rule over people that they have forgotten that they were called to save and even die for God's people. God's call requires us to die to our desire and only live for his desire for us. 1 John 3 and 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for who? For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? And what? Lose his own soul. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? 
These are some scary scriptures. The prosperity doctrine, the name it, claim it doctrine, the money cometh doctrine, the take back what was stole from me doctrine. I used to wonder these folk getting just bucking up. Take back what the devil stole. Take back. You didn't ever have it. You never had it. I want my bins back. I want my bins. You never had a bins. But he took it before I got it. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> you ain't never had no. <laughs> Take back what the devil stole. I mean, they start their prayers off like that. Oh, Lord, everything got the canker worm and the, and the ring worm and the, the earth worm, everything. God, I want it all. That they, they ain't ate your stuff. You ain't have it. Everybody get in line. Line up right now. Everybody that won't back what the devil stole, get in line. Just, everybody get in line. You need to ask them why you're praying for them. You sure the devil took that? I don't ever remember you having that. Oh, he took it before I got it. <laughs> that sounds impossible. But oh, I pray for you anyway. Good gracious. <laughs> Y'all, they was teaching all of this junk. Foolishness, prosperity, name it, claim it. Half the church looking for money so, and equating money with blessings from God. Because if we can make God financial and all that, then you're going to buy into the new world order. Now you feel like you have to have it. So you'll take what they're offering just so you can keep it. Because that's the devil trying to take it. Money cometh. Ooh, that was dumb. Talking to money. Money come, and I looked down, and a penny was on the ground. You got a whole lot of money coming to say before you can even pay a bill. Take, take back what the devil stole. Well, just get a job. Quit using the church to try to come up. And where you got to come up? these folks chasing this stuff and the day is coming where ain't none of it gonna mean anything they don't understand communism they don't understand totalitarianism that's the great equal that's gonna level everything that's gonna make everybody have the same thing y'all seen movies of, the, of, 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 of when uh, in the future when it's the future everybody walking around wearing the same thing all the time y'all ever seen that yeah when it's an alien race, whatever it is everybody's wearing the exact same thing I know I'm preaching. Oh, I can't upload this message, so you better enjoy it while you're hearing it now. True faith is not about. No, no, let me finish. The take back what was stolen from me doctrine. They've all been exposed by the lack of faith in their teachers during this pandemic. All of them. Take back what the devil stole, all of them. And boy, when they, I mean, they, they, they vacated that church, didn't they? Didn't even try to be in there. When they told him you can go back in there. Oh, no, that's all right. You know, the mandate's been lifted. lifted. So why are folks counseling service now? True faith is not about acquiring finances and living large, but it's about serving God in times of crisis and believing in his power in times of distress. That's true faith. Ephesians 6 and 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench how many darts? How many? So the shield of faith can quench how many darts? What about corona darts? Disease darts? Virus darts? Bill Gates of hell darts? <laughs> All the fiery darts of the wicked. 
Profiting off people through false doctrines and emotional hype does not work in times like these. That record has played. God's people need to know how to walk out the end times and firmly plant themselves to not be shaken by the great deception and strong delusion of our day. Matthew 7 and 24, therefore, whoever, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his, builds his house upon what? Rock. A rock. That is what we're doing in here. We are building our house on a solid rock. That rock is Jesus Christ. So no matter how the winds and the waves rise and blow, no matter what storm comes, if we built it on the solid foundation, Man, if you're worried about things, if you're worried about people's opinion, if you're worried about what people think about you, if you've got to have this and that to show folks this and that and this, oh, then you are part of the new world order. That's right, that's right. But those of us that don't care, we're building our solid foundation on the rock right. so we can withstand whatever comes. Yeah. Amen? Who the hand clap standing? Well, well. To see so many churches, pastors, and Christian leaders cower at the threat of a virus or death is sad. People get deployed to go fight for their country facing death. When they sign up or enlist, it's, automa I mean, it's known that you may die. But if I die, let me die serving my country? But you're going to cower at the threat of dying on the battlefield for the Lord who died for you? We should be willing to die on the battlefield if we are doing what we are called to do. Now, that's the see, that's it. If you're doing what you're called to do, you're not fearing. You're not afraid. It's like being in a platoon or whatever you are. I ain't never been over there. Sean still probably can correct me on this. But you over there, you got to make sure that you're doing your orders and you're following your orders so that you can, uh, so that you won't get killed or, you know, you won't be out of order. Amen. Because you're a threat to your own, to the safety of your own people if you're out of order. Amen. That's right, right? That's in every walk of life. Well, even in the kingdom, you're a threat to the people listening to you if you're out of order. If you out of order. So yeah, keep it closed. Close the church down. Don't go back in there. If you out of order. We should be willing to die on the battlefield if we're called to do what we're doing. First Peter 3 and 14. But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, what did the word say? Happy, Happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror. Neither be what? Troubled. Can I keep preaching? In the end times, we must be ready to sacrifice all for the cause of Christ. What are we living for if it's not the purpose and will of the one that controls life and death? Can the devil kill us? If the devil could kill us, we'd all be dead. Jesus rose with the power of death and life. That's what resurrection power is. Satan don't have it. So can the devil kill us? Can he terminate the plan of God without God's permission? Jesus rose with all power, including power over death. Until God says we are done, we are not done. We should not fear pestilence, poisons, or evil plots. If God is in control, we should be willing to lose our lives for his sake anyway. 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? Changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And how many of us are going to be changed? I read this scripture to show you where the power is. 
the power of death, the power of life, the resurrection power, all of it belongs to God. Devil ain't blowing no trumpet. He's not even a he's not even he's not even involved in this part. Summary. Are you sure you are on are, are you sure the path you are on is God's plan for you? Let me ask you one more time. Are you sure the path you are on is God's plan for you? Have you sought the Lord about your aspirations, goals, and plans? Folks get mad at what I'm preaching, Deshaun. They get mad at me for preaching it. And brother, you're stopping. See, see now you're blocking my progress. You're, what you're saying is, it's, 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 have you prayed about your progress? Have you, what you trying to do? Have you taken that before the Lord? Why you getting mad at me and what I'm preaching? Have you tested what you're doing? Have you tried the spirit of it? Did God give you that dream you are chasing? If God gave you the dream, then you wouldn't have to chase it. I'm telling you from experience. When it's God, you never have to make it happen or promote yourself in any way. God will come for you when it's time and he will promote you to your rightful place once you demote your own ideas and passions. Are you willing to give it up for him? Dying to yourself is the only way you will be used of God. Oh, I got a message for you. ABC, listen. In this last hour, we must let go of all of our selfish ambitions, grandiose plans and schemes, self-exalting ideas, and champion pursuits. They got to go. Time's out. Time's up for that. Our world is changing right before our eyes, and in order to get in the elite circles, you will be required to pledge your allegiance to the devil. It's already there. I see they won't even let the NFL players play. It's already there. So you looking to become a pro athlete or something? <laughs> Can I read what the Lord told me to tell you? Let me finish. Our world is changing right before our eyes, and in order to get in the elite circles, you will be required to pledge your allegiance to the devil. This is the hour of the Masons, the Greeks, and all secret societies. That's why they put all this together. That's why they was pledging Delta and pledging whatever they was pledging. They were taking pledges to greet gods, to represent prosperity or to be able to link up and give passes to people and move within society to achieve a common goal. That common goal is the Tower of Babel rebuilt. That's what it all is. I've been preaching about this for many, many years. So now is the hour of the Masons. Every Masonic company is going to say, you can't come in here unless... You're vaccinated. They're the ones that's not turning it down. This is why they do the lockdown. They do the lockdown to shut down the mom and pop operations of the people that haven't pledged. So all the people that haven't pledged, they're going to make them go bankrupt. And you will be 100% dependent on those that have pledged. Big tech. Fortune 500. All sports. Entertainment. Movies, everything. That's all owned by the Masons, the Greeks, and all the secret societies. So this is the hour that they call in their favors and force the new world order on their members. And you got to comply because look what we did for you. You pledged to us, we took care of you, now you got to comply. In order to be big in 2021 and beyond, you have to accept the agenda of the elite. To enter into million dollar contracts, you have to pledge your allegiance to the rebuilding of the tower. It's there. These types of aspirations in this time will lead you to selling your soul to the enemy. As Christians, we must be ready to give up all to follow Christ and turn down the opportunities to shine in exchange for our souls. What will a man give in exchange 
for his soul. If you really love him, you will deny yourself and lay down your own plans for him. People used to be happy with a wife, with a husband, with children, being at home, just looking at the joy on their faces, but being with friends, being with loved ones. Being with grandmama, talking to her. She telling you all the stuff that happened in the past. That stuff used to be fun. That's not what's fun no more. Now fun always involves Freemasonry. And a Mason telling you what's fun. They did that on purpose. Because now they're calling the Masons to tell you what to put in your body. In exchange for the fun. Look at somebody and say, what will you do? Matthew 16 and 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall do what? Reward every man according. To his works. What was fun to you in this life? What was important to you in this life? Was it applause? Was it opinion? Was it what somebody thought? Was it what you thought somebody was thinking? What's important to you? Right after he says, What will you give in exchange for your soul? He says, The Son of Man is going to put on the greatest display. In the history of existence, he's going to come in the glory of his father with his angels. Then he's going to reward those that denied themselves in this life for him. Then Jesus says something very deep. He says, verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And I say the same thing to all of you. There are some in here right now that will not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Everyone stand. Yep, you just have to make a decision. That's it. It's all about a decision. It's about a choice. That's, that's what it's about. But choice is so important for us that they want to rig you and your body so they can control the choice you make. That's how important choice is. Because they know if you choose Christ, they have no power over you. So they got to get some kind of pharmacos influence to change your thinking, to alter your choice. Because your choice is that powerful. If you choose Christ, your choice is that powerful. That means no matter what they do, they can't take Christ from you. Because you chose him. Everyone bow your heads. Make the choice today that no matter what's getting ready to happen in this world, no matter what they're saying on the news, no matter what the devil is doing, no matter what is happening, I'm making the choice right now. I'm choosing Christ. I'm going to choose his way. You know, this little preacher made sense today. It's about my choice. And I'm going to make that choice right now. And if that's you, if you're making a choice for Christ today, maybe you hadn't made that choice before, or you are solidifying the choice, I want you to just come up, and I'm going to pray along with you and believe God with you. This is my choice. So I'm going to put what I want to do, what I thought I wanted to do, who I thought I wanted to be, who I thought I needed to be, what I thought was going to get me applause, hand claps, or a whole lot of money. I'm putting all of that to the side 
I'm pushing it away and I'm going to be who God says. I want to make that choice today. I'm making the choice and choosing Christ today. Y'all, we are a church. That's who we are. And we're not just a church. We're God's church. That's who we are. And we're going to stand as long as we can stand. We'll stand till they try to knock us down. And even then, we'll get back up and stand some more. Because we're God's church. So we're going to represent him in this end time no matter what. Y'all, I'm in it to win it. I don't know what you in it for. I hope you can last. But I'm standing until I see Jesus. Anyone else? What would a man give? What is more important than your soul? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, I just thank you for each and every person that has come. And God, I thank you for your word and your truth. I thank you, God, for this place that you have created, divinely orchestrated to be here in this time. This little building in North Richland Hill, you ordained for it to be here during this time so that these messages can be heard, be spoken, be received. God, I believe 100% that you are speaking through me to this congregation. I believe that you've ordained for it to happen this way so that these that have come today, their lives can change forever. Their children's lives will change forever. Their marriages will change forever. Their relationships will change forever. Father God, you brought them to a place today where change could occur. And we thank you for that, God. We don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted. They could burn this building down. They could padlock it. The, 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 the landlord could shut us down. Whatever. We, we don't take it for granted, God, that we have a place to come and worship you and hear your truth. And so, Father, in this hour, we will stand. So I pray those that have come, God, that have given their lives to you wholeheartedly, not a formality, not, you know, a ritual, but, Father God, Today they decided that it's going to be you for them. I pray for them right now. Each and every man that is standing strong in his home. Each and every woman that's standing strong in her home. Standing strong for her children, for her family. Each and every person in here that is standing in this hour. God, I pray for extra grace upon their lives, Father God. As they navigate through all of this vax mess. All of this stuff, God. As they're, they're being tested, even their finances or they're being bullied because they decided not to take it or whatever the case I pray for grace for them God that you will give them the grace they need to make it through this time I pray Father God for finances for them Father God that you will give them what they need I pray God that you will continue to sustain them in this hour your people are always sustained and blessed during times like these Father God so as the world is going crazy around us we feel your love. We feel your protective shield. We feel your hand of protection. We feel your concern. We feel how you feel about us, God. We are important to you. So I pray right now, God, that we will make you important to us. So each and every person, under the sound of my voice, Father God, that we will elevate you to that level of importance. That you'll become more important than our aspirations, our dreams, our desire for money our desire for fame, our desire for whatever, you will become more important so we won't sell you out with a deal or sign a contract or do something, Father God, to sell our soul away. And I pray that you will keep us all in this hour. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everyone lift your hands. Father God, I pray and we all pray in unison, God, as a unified body, we pray for the other churches, other pastors, other leaders, other members. Father God, that they would stand up in this hour and not cower. That they will not be weak, but they will be strong. Father God, we bear their infirmities. We bear the infirmities of the weak. We take on their weakness. We take on them being cowardice. We take on their fear, Father God. And we stand for them right now. And I pray, God, that you would ignite it in them to stand strong in this hour and not fear. We rebuke the spirit of fear. You have not given us the spirit of fear, 
but power, love, and a sound mind. So we speak power, we speak love, and we speak a sound mind upon our brothers and sisters all over this world that should be standing in this hour. We pray against their fear. Touch them, Lord. Help them be strong. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.